Singapore is looking at more laws to protect victims of harmful online content, given the ever-changing nature of the internet. The Law and Home Affairs Minister says that they should empower those affected by issues like cyberbullying and sexual harassment online to take action. Minister Keshan Mugam was speaking at the Online Harms Symposium, which focuses on how individuals experience the online world. The call comes on the back of two major bills passed in the past year, one as recently as July. But Mr. Shanmugam says that there are still risks not covered by current laws. For instance, when it comes to intimate photos uploaded without consent, it's uncertain on what can be done legally. Mr. Shanmugam also pointed to a recent study that showed almost 40% of respondents having encountered harmful online content. It's more common among youths, with two-thirds of them saying so. Mr. Shanmugam says that these can have a serious impact. Survey findings are quite sobering. It's a reality check. You really can't have generations of young people growing up with these issues. Their mental health, amongst other things, will be seriously affected. And I think societies all around the world, including us, are behind the curve in dealing with this effectively. More solutions are set to be discussed over the next few days. These will include academics and even Supreme Court judges. The event also featured a panel of victims. CNA spoke to Eve on her experience with cyberstalking and harassment. It started with hostile messages on various social media platforms before they appeared on LinkedIn. The insults, the name calling and the harassment and abusive words just started coming from my phone, like nonstop for a few minutes. And I, the immediate concern for me was, oh my God, like, are my colleagues going to see this? Are my employer going to see this? Are my clients going to see this? It caused me a lot of stress because I don't know what they think of me. I wish someone could really look into how the laws governing this space can, uh, can be improved. I don't know who, who is the perpetrator. Uh, the identity was not disclosed because the police say they are, they, they are not supposed to, uh, simply. It was adding on to a lot of anxiety back then. And for more on how expanded laws will help the nation combat online harms, we are joined by Assistant Professor Saifuddin Ahmad from the Wee School of Communication and Information at NTU. Uh, good evening to you, Professor Saifuddin. We just heard there from a victim. Uh, maybe you could start by telling us at what point these actions cross the line and become cyberbullying or sexual harassment under the existing laws. Right. Yeah, uh, thanks for inviting me. So uh, if we talk about general trends and not a specific case, this is uh, actually a difficult question to answer because what qualifies as cyberbullying or sexual harassment within the context of online harms can be a complex issue uh, due to the nature of online interactions and contextual uh, differences itself. Though uh, we can rely on several areas. First is, of course, the legal framework. Uh, many contexts, including Singapore, has legal framework that defines specific harms, for example, cyberbullying. Now, the definitions may vary across contexts, but they do provide us with a good foundation to understand what constitutes uh, the harm within a context. We also need to pay attention to uh, community guidelines to see what actions are acceptable or not acceptable. Besides, uh, we can pay attention to cultural and uh, contextual sensitivities. Uh, this is well respected in Singapore. But... The attention to these legal, social, con cultural considerations are common. But besides all of this, we also need to pay attention to the psychological considerations. For example, in the case that we just heard about. So the consideration of the impact of the harm, uh, including emotional and physical and psychological distress that it may cause to individuals or to groups. Uh, so perhaps we need a more comprehensive framework that goes beyond just the legal details to effectively combat online harms in the case of cyberbullying or, or sexual harassment. 
Professor, uh, you talk about a comprehensive framework that goes beyond just the legal details. But even on legal details alone, we are still seeing, it's just fairly recent, uh, expansion of our laws to better protect people from online harms. What more gaps uh, do, we, do you see that legally we can still address even before we go move into a comprehensive framework? Okay. Uh, so... All of us heard the minister talk. So if, if the government feels that the current laws are not comprehensive enough, then I feel uh, it comes from an in-depth understanding of the issue at their end, uh, hopefully backed by data. Uh, we can guess, but they are the best judge of regulation. Now, the minister mentioned that discrepancies in uh, how Singaporeans feel about online and offline safety. This is not surprising because uh, even in my data, uh, we see that uh, Civic concerns regarding defects, which is a significant form of online threat, they have increased in the last three years. And especially after uh, the last uh, bill was introduced, the law was should not a bill. So, however, before expanding the existing laws, uh, we should identify the areas that need more attention. An area I think uh, that needs more attention is definitely the threats posed by defects. But also having an adaptable law that incorporates uh, evolving online threats can help. Professor Saifuddin, we heard earlier the Law and Home Affairs Minister say that Singapore may well be somewhat behind the curve when it comes to uh, protecting victims, having the right laws, as it were. Can we learn from other jurisdictions at all, especially when it comes to things like preventing people from putting up intimate content online without the other person's consent? Sure, uh, there's always an opportunity to learn. So I think several countries have implemented laws and regulations aimed at preventing the non-consensual distribution of endemic content. Uh, US, UK, Australia, India, all of these countries have in, uh, implemented laws. So uh, maybe we can use to study these laws and to see while these laws are specific to each context, the goal, the overall goal is to provide support and protection to individuals whose privacy and dignity have been violated by sharing uh, the content online. So these laws can be studied to identify the areas that have worked, uh, the areas which may need improvement, and especially the areas which can be applied to the Singaporean context. Uh, they have some advantages. Well, however good the laws, uh, they are useless if they cannot be implemented uh, well. Uh, in the context of the internet, is implementation a serious problem? Yeah, uh, completely agree. Uh, there's a significant challenge to enforcement of these laws, especially when you talk about the internet, because of the cross-border nature of the medium. Uh, the actors could be located anywhere in different countries, right? Also, the use of sophisticated tech remains a concern for enforcement agencies. Uh, however, while I don't have the data for this, I, I feel that investment in advanced digital forensics could be one of the ways that can be backed to trace these sources. Also, strengthening uh, data protection and privacy regulations would prevent data misuse by overseas actors. Additionally, while it comes with own set of challenges, uh, interna international cooperation and agreement may just hold the key uh, where state parties can facilitate cross-border investigations. We don't see this happening uh, at a wide, uh, wide scale. Uh, maybe this can be implemented as well. Oh, thanks for spending your time with us and breaking that down for us. We've been speaking with Assistant Professor Saifuddin Amar from the Wee School of Communication and Information at NTU.